And we're live. All right. How exciting. Hello, everybody out there in Facebook land. This is Kathy Beal. And I have with me Beverly Beal, no relation that we know of, the intuitive interior. And we are here today because it's the Aquarius new moon. And tomorrow is the Chinese new year. And there is an interesting connection between them energetically. So I thought I would ask Beverly to tell us a little bit about what is going on from her perspective. And can you just give us a little bit of an introduction um, of how you got interested in this type of, in developing knowledge about what's going on with the Chinese New Year? And you mean, how, how, how does a little girl who grew up on a pig farm in the middle of Kansas suddenly become a feng shui master? Exactly. <laughs> You know, uh, truthfully, I had always been a very curious child. Uh, and I think that's what happens when uh, you, you stick somebody who has an Aquarius moon, uh, <laughs> or excuse me, Aquarius, uh, yeah, you know, Aquarius moon uh, mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere without a lot of resources. And so I found everything I could possibly uh, absorb. Uh, but it wasn't until uh, 2003, after I finished with breast cancer treatments, that a friend gave me a book on feng shui. And that's how I began to use it to help me within my healing journey. Uh, and the more I learned, the more I wanted to learn. When I first began my feng shui career, it was uh, in the Western tradition. It was in the, where it was you didn't really put you know, focus much on the, the elements or, or the, the animal signs or the directions of the house. Uh, I switched over when I saw the impact of uh, really using the earth and the directions as uh, you know, an extra partner in manifesting whatever it is your, your goals are. So uh, I have actually studied with I think the last count is seven different major teachers. Uh, the last, the, in fact, the, 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 the master that I'm studying with the most right now is uh, uh, Joey Yap. He is based in Malaysia, and I was able to meet him last year, two year old, well, September of 2019. I keep forgetting that last year was 2020 because I'm trying to right. <laughs> no, lock it right. out. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but you know what? I got, I got to say, uh, the... Um, the pandemic uh, really has not been all bad for me. It's actually been, you know, fairly, you know, actually quite good in many ways uh, because so many of the classes that I wanted to take that I would have had to travel to Malaysia for are now all online. Well, that's, so that's quite a boon. <laughs> it has been. It's I have I have I have certainly indulged my inner inner seminar junkie. <laughs> Um, and you also you also work at a distance too because when I first moved into my house you had me send you um, photos of all the rooms and then you put them on the bagua and yes yeah. absolutely and and you know pretty much everybody has an iPhone uh, or or a phone of some kind and the even though it's not quite as precise as my low pan compass it gives people enough it gives me enough to go on uh that if people stand in the center of their home and they they and they they take out their compass app, app and they're and then they in the middle of their home face their front door that helps me then uh, be able to give them the information that they need as long as they're providing me with that and a floor plan I can pretty much feng shui anybody's house. And then, you know, Zoom is a wonderful tool. <laughs> and uh, so we can walk through the house that way. Um, but yeah, the, the thing that I was, you know, like, and I've been listening to your podcast and to your, your uh, astrology updates for many years now. And, you know, and I love, I love how you bring everything together in a way that is, uh, you're, you're touching on multiple levels, so not just the astrology part, but there's the real human component. And then you have the songs that go with it. And, you know, music is, it's, I mean, music is a great uh, clearing uh, you know, modality. You, you get song, you, I mean, that's why singing bowls are so powerful, but you, come on, we all know how, how songs can really shift our, us out of a funk. Uh, but yeah, so when we were, uh, I was looking some more at the Aquarius uh, new moon and 
and what all the Chinese uh, year of the metal ox was like, it was like, whoa, we've got, we've got some, some fun, fun things coming up. So, okay. So talk about each year has an animal and it also has, the animal has an element. So there are, for each animal, there are five variations and they cycle through once every 60 years, correct? The same pairing will be Correct. Yeah. So, so in general, every there, there are 12 animal signs that line up with the 12, you know, roughly they line up with the Western Zodiac signs. Um, each sign has what they call a natal element. So that's, it's just, it's, it's, it's natural home. Like right now the ox naturally lives in earth energy. It has earth energy. It is a yin earth energy, which is a slower moving energy, but it's also paired with then the flavoring uh, uh, element. So every year you have, like last year was the um, metal rat. Well, that was the yang metal rat. We're now in the yin metal ox. So now you've, you've got, remember, yin metal and yin earth as part of just the natural ox energy. Uh, next year is going to be the tiger. Well, with the next element uh, in the five element cycle is water. So now next year, we're going to be the year of the yang water tiger. That's going to be an interesting year. I'm just going to lay it out like that. So let's, but let's, we're not talking about that. that one. Let's leave that. We've got enough we're dealing with. All right. So we're, no, coming like, out of, we're coming out of a time when the ground has been collapsing beneath our feet, metaphorically, everywhere we turn. And astrologically, uh, starting at the solstice in December and then really amping up today, now we're in a portal to a completely different way of being. Now there is we're moving into new constructs. We'll be dealing with the collapse, but the collapse is no longer defining our lives. Uh, an Aquarian friend of mine had a beautiful way of putting it uh, that he's had vanishing priorities over the last year, vanishing people, mm -hmm. vanishing situations. And I thought, okay, so now there's this empty space that's been created and everyone has fewer things that are really important to them and it's time to take those to the limits i've got a bunch of songs going through my head <laughs> <laughs> the eagles just went i was gonna say and actually it's even beyond the limit i mean there's something here about just about a whatever the previous way has been of doing something nope nope time to be yourself really be right yourself. Right. So from using, you know, for the tools that I have and, and the lens that I'm looking through last year being a yang metal uh, rat, it, you know, yang metal is, is very much like an ax. And so there's like this ax chopping down the, every tree, you know, just raising the forest and, and, uh, or thinking of a, like a, a backhoe, because that's, also kind of the feeling that I had last year was we had this big backhoe coming in and dredging up all of the dark stuff. And, you know, the rat energy in general likes to take advantage of whatever opportunities are there. So, you know, they were just coming in and like, nye, 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 I'm going to take a, and it's very entrepreneurial. It was not always all bad. Rat, rat energy is not all bad. It's just when you couple it with that yang metal, that backhoe, it's, it's a little much. So this year, you know, when you're talking about that, that energy of, of, you know, the sinkhole is kind of what I was seeing in my mind as you were talking about that. I, I've been doing my best to reframe it as this is what happens to the soil when a seed erupts from the shell to begin coming up and, and, and growing. You know, you have, but it has there, it, you have to burst out of that container. The ox energy in general is that of a builder. You want, uh, you know, people with strong ox energy uh, because, because they will come in with a very focused plotting one foot in front of the other. And they're the ones who, who pull us out of the sinkhole. This ox energy that's coming in, be and because it's yin metal, um, there's, there's, there's still going to be structure. 
there still needs to be, you know, an adherence to rules and regimens and, you know, it's that again, very structured. We're going to move through, but it's got a, a softer feel to it. It's one that really you can tap into more creative problem solving. So you've got this ox energy that's like, okay, I'm going to go through here. All right, that door looks slightly open. I'm just going to push right through and keep on going. Um, it's not the slamming up against a brick wall energy like we had last year. There, there still is, there's still some flavor of that. There's still a lot of, you know, feeling so slow because it is so plotting. It's, you know, all that yin energy. Um, it, you know, it, if, if someone is, is really used to just flying by the seat of their pants, they are going to hate life this year because there is none of that going on in, in the general collective energy of the yin ox or the yin metal ox year. A lot of time to think about what is next. Now, as you're saying this, I'm making the astrological yes. correlations like crazy. And the first one is that ox energy sounds very much like Taurus energy, Taurus the bull. Taurus yep. is ruled by Venus. And today, Venus is in a conjunction with Jupiter, which expands everything it touches. And so mm -hmm. these are two very indulgent uh, image, uh, very indulgent influences, and um, the deal. Taurus and Venus deal with the voice, with creativity, with physical experience of life, um, and the two of them together are more, more, more. The Andrea True connection, I, you know. My, a lot of my references are dated. I will admit that. <laughs> oh, it's work. Uh, anyway, so there's this uh, beautiful Venus-Jupiter conjunction that's blessing this new moon and also kicking off the year of the ox. So there's this weird overlap there. The other piece that I see is that um, the ruler of Aquarius, which is Uranus, the, I call him the advocate of alternate viewpoints, has been for a couple of years moving through the sign of Taurus. And now all of the bodies that are in Aquarius are going to have a contact with Uranus uh, that demands action or forces action and will be, I, it's stress testing the new structures. It's also forcing innovative different ways of dealing with structure or putting structure on tangible change. There are a couple of ways you can look at it. And Saturn, which rules structure, I call him the planet of adulting. Saturn uh, is clashing with Uranus three times this year, exactly, and the first one is next week. So the leading right into it, it's the next week, end of June, Christmas Eve, yeehaw. So all year long, and this is the major theme of this year astrologically mm -hmm. uh and so there's a strong taurus taurian taurus element to it it happens on the earth plane there astrologically there will be big moments of sudden change but then lumbering ahead lumbering ahead and then the lightning will yep. hit and then lumbering ahead it's not like last year when the construction machinery was at work for the entire year. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the year for, you know, from from the the uh, uh, Chinese ast astrology point of view. Uh, yeah, the, the lumbering, I think is is the key word there. It's like, we're just, I just the, the word that comes to mind for me is, is plotting, consistent, um, it's, it's a lot about a lot, a lot of precision, because again, I think of like yin metal energy, I think of jewelry making and there's like, there's, there's a lot of precision and creativity that have to go into making jewelry. And, and so in many ways we can look at this whole year of, all right, we have all of these pieces that came out of the rubble what can we do with them now? 
<laughs> and it's it's about you know putting things together in a in a new kind of a container, a new fashion. It's it really is reworking, retooling uh, a lot of the 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 processes that that we came in with. Um, you know the. But I don't see this year. I know you keep talking about you know all this this Aquarian energy of, uh, you know I I think of Aquarian energy as, um, very futuristic thinking, a lot of a lot of imagining of of what new can happen, um, it, and and I I see seeds of that absolutely being planted and being slowly brought. To bear, but it's the ox. It's the you know the ox doesn't necessarily grow things. The ox plants things and corrals them and contains them. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm thinking. That's that's how I'm seeing it. You tell me what you know. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you can also look at Aquarius as building networks, as hmm. as a, okay. So one 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 way. Last year was a in the last couple of years have been a really heavy Capricorn emphasis, which is on how we've always done things, on institutions, on structures, okay. on long-term goals. And now it has shifted to the individual and the community instead of the institution. So you're going to see much more collective coming together, uh, building networks. Uh, there will be an element of it being using a, a technology uh, the online presence will, for a lot of reasons, I mean, it fits the astrology, yeah. what we're all experiencing, but there's more of a flourishing. It's not, okay, we're doing this because we're stuck in our houses and we're going to have cocktails with our friends at five o'clock on Friday, which I know you're going to do tomorrow, but besides that, no, it's 5.30 actually, uh, but but more of a, of, a, of a conscious building of communities and a conscious appreciation for what you're doing with small groups um, and and figuring out different solutions. Now, I like to look at things in terms of cycles, recurrences, mm -hmm. patterns, because we never do anything right now. It always grows out of where we've been. And there are two, several different times in history that might give information about now. They don't entirely line up with what you're talking about. But the first one is 91 to 92, Saturn, planet of adulting, is currently traveling through the areas where he was then. And Saturn always gives an opportunity to um, <laughs> revisit how well you've been using your energy. If you've been acting responsibly, uh, systems, uh, structures will, foundations will lock into place. You'll get reward for hard work. And if you've been screwing around, there are repercussions. Then the next one, taking it further back, uh, 60, 59 years ago. So you said 60 years ago was the last right. time we had this. 59 years ago was the last time we had a pileup of um, this have this many planets in Aquarius at any one time. So that was February 1962. And taking it back a little further, Uranus, the guy who's in the sign of Taurus, the bull, is occupying, he's traveling through a territory he last went through during the New Deal. When mm -hmm. we were coming up with social safety nets, with um, ways of dealing with the environment, uh, harnessing electricity in a different way, setting up the Tennessee Valley Authority. There were a number of programs, putting people to work, doing things for the common good. And you're gonna see that coming around again. So that's actually working with the earth. Um, there is a, so from an astrological point of view, we have a fusing of the vision and doing things in a mundane way that directly affect life in the moment, not just sitting around thinking about it, sitting in cafes, smoking cigarettes, and drinking wine until four in the morning, talking about things new, actually taking our hands, getting them dirty and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Which also fits very much with that, you know, the, the salt of the earth, that, that, that the, the, the uh, hardworking ox, that, that is, you know, the, 
one of the original domesticated animals that people used to to be able to to survive. Um, uh, yeah, so the, that that sixty year cycle it it's very much lines up with the with the Saturn uh, or excuse me with the uh, I can't. Uh, I just got confused. Is it Saturn or Jupiter that has the 60 year size? Jupiter. No, Jupiter Saturn. has a 12 year no, cycle. No, no, Saturn. So it's a, yeah. Like I said, like I said Saturn has a, little... a 28 and a half to 30 year cycle. Exactly. Right. So, okay. So, but with this 60 year cycle, um, the way in, in feng shui and in, in, in the Chinese astrology, there's a, there's a uh, 20 year this, this cycle that they call a period. And this period, um, it kind of flavors the next 20 year cycle. And so we're coming up on the, on a change of that, which is impacting this year of the metal ox a little bit even more because it's actually bringing in a little bit more of a fire energy to it. There's like a, like a soft glowing glow up, <laughs> if you will, kind of like when Mercury goes retrograde, there's the shadow period before and the shadow period after so we're really in a big transition period right now, because not only are we having this plotting, slow moving, relatively creative time period where, where there is a lot of communication networks and things like that being built, we're getting a, even more of that coming in with the advent of this period nine energy that doesn't officially uh, start until 2024. So we got four more or three more years. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into too much more detail on that, but I'm just sharing this because when you're talking about building the networks and, and, uh, and that kind of a thing, one of the things that is really coming up big in, in Chinese astrology is the um, wisdom, uh, you know, the, 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 the wisdom keepers, not just information, it's going to be the wisdom keepers who are going to be the ones who can take all of that stuff that's out there and com and condensing it down so that people can understand they're going to be the ones in demand and uh the feminine you know the the rise of of powerful women that is also because that's building community that is what uh, you know is is all part of that and it just you know, comes rather easily for us but no i i um the one thing too that this yin metal energy has and that it, it focuses a lot on is again the, the very precise details you know uh, clear thinking people who will talk to some you know talk to the experts and they're that are willing to take advice from those who know who know their stuff um they are going to do much better this year than those who try to go it alone. So again, it comes right back to building that community, finding the people you trust and knowing, you know, going with the folks that, you know, like you, who know their stuff. And as you're saying that, my Zoom and my green screen are doing just wild and wacky things. <laughs> Whatever is going on, I've got stuff shooting off my aura. Okay, fine. Uh. You know what? I I just look at that as as the the technology gods saying, nope, your energy is way too big to be contained in this little tiny box. I'm gonna if I lean forward, it doesn't do it quite. Nope, there we go. It's, <laughs> it's, it's actually hopeless. kind of why I stopped doing those because it's it, yeah, it it gets a little gets a little crazy. Oh, well, this is a new one. Um, there's a question. What should everyone be doing in regards to health and career in this coming Chinese New Year? Well, that's kind of broad. Very broad. But um, so one of the things that I like to suggest is, you know, red envelopes. You know, I just actually just got these, got a pack of these uh, from Amazon, even though I don't love shopping from Amazon. You can find them other places too, but in a pinch, you know, that will come. Um, there are very specific areas to, to focus uh, the fire element in. The, the one, the first is the, um, excuse me, the Northeast sector of your house. This Northeast sector 
normally it goes along with skills and knowledge, but this year the energy that that it, uh, with with it with this particular configuration really helps to amplify um, going inside, getting introspective, so that you can really understand what your career path is supposed to be and what your life path is supposed to be. So the red envelope goes great there. If you need, do you put anything? Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're right. No, I, uh, what I like to do is, is, uh, is write out an, um, whatever your goal is, you know, what is, what is your goal? What is your desire? Write it out as if you've already received it. And I always thought I start with, I'm so grateful for, you know, this, new career development or this promotion or uh, completing this, you know, degree if we're having completed this, you know, whatever else you want. And then, you know, and then right now I always finish it up at, you know, with thank you, th or this the equivalent or something better. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if there's rela relationship challenges, uh, this will go, in the, again, the, the red envelope, but it goes into the Southwest corner but this time with, of course, the note saying something about, you know, I'm so grateful I found my soulmate and this is what we're like and how we are together and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it really get as, and make sure you write as if it has happened. For health, the center of a person's home is the sector that corresponds to health. And uh, if there are health issues, you know, that's a very complex uh, situation because if you think about a tic-tac-toe grid, that center section is, you know, all the other, other, other boxes touch it. Well, that's what a Bagua map looks like. It looks like a tic-tac-toe grid. So the health sector really is, is what people need to look at the most. And if you need to um, amplify your your health that is the that is you know certainly look at that but the next thing i would look at honestly is water i would look at the north part of your home uh and also look at all of your plumbing to make sure there aren't any water leaks because water and money uh it, money money really is just tangible energy and that's actually one of the reasons why in traditional chinese culture the red envelope you know, the, you get your money put in there and, and that's what they exchange. They exchange money. <laughs> you know, they give you money gifts because money is representative of tangible chi and water represents money. And if you are leaking water, you're leaking chi, you're leaking life force, you're leaking money, you're leaking everything that makes you go and, and, and do and, you know, be alive. So that's, those would be my suggestions there for, for those three in particular for, for this. Any other Thank questions you. coming up? Uh, no, a lot of people are saying, what their animal is <laughs> so okay to put it in your own personal perspective when you hit the age of 60 you come to the year and energy the animal and the energy that you were born with the animal mm -hmm. and the element right right so it comes around once in your life that is true yeah so my so so that's the interesting thing too that for the person who is the, their animal is the year, uh, you know, it, it, it is their year, like for all the oxes this year, this, well, this is their year. Um, there's been a kind of a, a, a storyline that goes through a lot of traditional uh, Chinese uh, lore that if it's your year, like for all the oxes this year, that, it, you know, that many of them say, oh, this is a terrible year. No, it's not because it, the reason why, you know, in the past it was looked at that as, as being a, a bit of a challenge as, as possibly bringing, you know, bad luck is because in traditional Chinese culture, you didn't want to stand out. You didn't want to be getting, having the spotlight put on you because everything was so collective based that if you stood out, then you weren't doing right by the collective. Um, 
we being here in this country and you know in, in more of a western version this means that when it's your year you have a spotlight on you you have you know so you, there's a you have a lot of opportunity for you know a very very increased visibility that can be good or bad depending upon how you've been behaving before if you've been a in you know being you know have an integrity or out of integrity it'll 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 come out mm -hmm. so so I all like your oxes is out there beware and clean up your stuff if you haven't been be, if you have if you've been doing a little little stuff on the side just fair warning someone has asked for an explanation of uh yin and yang Yin and Yang is you. You people have seen that 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 you know where there's the the Tai Chi where you've got the kind of it looks like a, a a comma with a dot in the middle that's black with a white dot and then the white comma uh, that that forms a circle and that has a black dot. Yin is a more uh, softer, slower. Uh, some people refer to it as a feminine energy. It it's is receptive, it, right? It's more receptive, exactly. Um, and, and that it's, it tends to be the lighter colors. It's, it tends to be again, white, uh, it's, it's the slower moving, uh, deep textures, that kind of a thing. So something that once you're just going to like snuggle up and, 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 you know, like a nice hot or a nice, nice cold day, just drink a hot cup of hot cocoa. That is like the ultimate yin activity. You curl up with a blanket on your sofa and you're drinking hot cocoa. Yang, on the other hand, is active it's movement it is force it's fast moving it's slick shiny um there it, it can be of like a sharp edge even um where instead of like a dull edge it's also people refer to it as a masculine uh energy so when the reason why there's the dot in the middle is there's always some yin even in the most yang situation uh, as well as some uh, yang, even in the most yin situation. Uh, obviously, you want to try to have balance, but it's think about the ocean. There's always the the you know yang energy of the tide coming in, and then the yin energy of the tide coming out. You need the flow for the, everything to be in balance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, trying to figure a question out here. I'm not sure what to do with this one. Uh, so going back to the possibilities of this year, two, two things. The first is uh, how, if someone wanted to actually honor or celebrate or do something to work at the energy of the Chinese New Year, what might they do? Um, well, the Chinese New Year, they, one of the, th the biggest thing that happens is cleaning out the old to make room for the new. So nobody really wants to go and you know scrub every inch of their house, but that actually is a huge tradition. Hmm. Um, go, uh, another thing that often happens is the you know going around and banging on pots and pans and making as much energy, you know, making as much noise as you can and it with, with all the doors and the windows open to, again, chase out the old energy so that the new can be welcomed in. Um, the, the, one of the fun things that I like to do is pretend, you know, I, I'll, I'll get a bag of oranges and oranges are, you know, because they're, they're, gold kind of and round there they kind of look like the ingots the gold coins and so one of the traditions is to roll in the gold you take and you you after you sweep everything and it's all clean you take the oranges and you roll them into your front door as welcoming in the uh the wealth uh, energy of the of the new year interesting and oranges associated with venus so i like that <laughs> very nice works really well uh if you have the book written for a previous ox year, is it the same or would the years be written with the earth flavor? 
So what I'm hearing is that you, the, 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 the person who's asking the question has a book that is written up because the, the previous ox year would have been um, an earth ox year. Uh, because even though the, the natal energy of the ox is earth, the, the, um, the other top element is, is different. So it's, it, the, the way the five elements goes, it's water, wood, fire, earth, metal and it goes around so so like right now we we just we had we we're finishing up the second pair of the metal years two years but you know before that was earth etc next year like i said for the next two years after this will be water years so yes and no there will be still some very valid information in that uh earth ox year but you're really going to miss out on the um metal energy influence um it, but but it's still good information for ox in general thank you but just not as specific for this year and and my other question i said i had two uh is probably just a wrap up of what you were saying before and that is for everybody regardless of what your animal is how to best make use of the energies of this year. And it sounds like pay attention to detail, uh, perfect, make things, if you can actually make them with your hands, sounds like, right? Mm -hmm. or, and plant real and metaphoric seeds. Anything else, anything else you'd add, say differently? Um, yeah, I, I would also uh, add that it is, it really is a good, good year that if you're if one is is wanting to start uh, an education program now is a great this is a great year because again think that that's that's planting seeds mm -hmm. that is planting seeds for a future career change or career enhancement um so just, you know, taking courses learning as much as you can implementing it though not just taking the classes but actually putting it to use mm -hmm. um it, it really this this energy this year really rewards hard work tenacity and patience which i'm not a real patient person so I kinda, <laughs> yeah yeah i kind of have to kind of have to deal with that um but uh uh it, it is it is that would be my biggest suggestion is you've got this big wonderful helper on your side this ox is your friend and you can as long as you are willing to give it a goal and and point it in a direction you're going to be able to accomplish so much uh, because you've got the structure and and it, it's that's one of the things i'm super excited about this year especially after last year it <laughs> it was it just it's it's like I can take off the suit of armor and put on a gold lame jacket. <laughs> it's still metal. <laughs> and now look at you. <laughs> Ends around. Uh, believe yeah. me, I've got the lame jacket. <laughs> I don't. I need to get one. You need to tell me where you got yours and maybe I can. <laughs> I was sent to the warehouses where the drag queens in Houston buy their clothes. And, oh boy, it was rich. <laughs> that sounds like quite the uh, quite the experience. The one thing I there's one thing I do want to bring up though, since somebody had asked specifically about you know the the health and and career etc. Um, every year the energy kind of there the, there's a, a number that's associated with uh, each of the sectors of the bagua map and so every year the energy for uh one particular sector is a little bit more challenged than others this year it's the southeast sector the the center box is called the five yellow five yellow it, it's just a name but it's it's like heavy heavy like a heavy heavy dust storm think of think of the sahara in a big sandstorm it can it can over it can you know completely change the landscape it can either uncover untold wealth or it can bury you 
And so you've got this energy that can be, you know, one thing or the other. Rarely is it like just in the middle, unless it's going in, staying in the middle. This year it's going into the Southeast. The Southeast is, is where uh, it, in this, it's usually called the uh, wealth and abundance sector. Now, this is more about long-term wealth. This is stock market. This is our, our, our investments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You want to bring in metal energy for the Southeast. So that it, I usually use uh, something that's called a five element pagoda. I find it online because most people aren't living in, you know, they, they may be living in an apartment and so they don't really have space to put anything huge in. Um, I know some of the Chinese uh, masters that I've studied with recommend bringing in literally 60 pounds worth of metal. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, yeah, I suppose you could go get some barbells and put them in there, but I, I'm all about making things look pretty too. And that ain't pretty. So, <laughs> so I, I would, I would look for something called a five element pagoda. And the goal of this is you unscrew the top and then you actually take earth from outside of that southeast sector and you put it into the five element pagoda and then you screw it back on that is symbolically locking up this big unbalanced five yellow energy and planting it to you know make it steady and make it smooth um if you even doing that my recommendation is avoid poking holes in your walls, tearing walls out, doing any major renovations in the Southeast sector, if you can avoid it at all. Uh, because I've had personal experience where I've ignored my own advice. Whoops. <laughs> Haven't we all done that? <laughs> yeah, it, it, not, not, not good, not good things happen. So, so that's the other thing that I really wanted to leave people with. Um, because that's a, just a big, you know, that, that has really, that can have impact, you know, major impacts that last throughout the year. Because that doesn't change until next February. Could you put uh, the five element pagoda on the outside in that sector? You can. I prefer it on in the inside because I spend more time inside. So need, uh, it needs to be something you're physically in the energy of. I, like I said, I personally get, now I, like for me, my house, my, I actually have a part of that part of, that part of my house is actually missing, you know, missing. It, it's not completely squared off. And, and so for me, I, I actually have metal outside and metal inside. So, you know, I, cover both of the bases but okay. that's right yeah and there is there's an explanation of an earlier question that i think i can universalize okay uh well this is from a dragon who says it looks like the dragon luck is mostly two stars with only one three stars why out of five areas love wealth health and work anyway um Different years are more auspicious for some signs than others. Correct. And what I have found is um, there's, there's this whole complicated uh, chart that says, which animals are your friends? Which are your enemies? Which are your secret friends? Which, you know... I haven't put a whole lot of stock into that just yet, because again, my, in my experience, there can be such a thing as a self-fulfilling prophecy. And oh. if you believe that this is going to be a terrible year for you, well, you're going to keep oh. your eyes peeled to find all the terrible things. And that's why, that's actually one of the reasons why when I was first learning, you know, looking at studying feng shui, it was, okay, do I go with the traditional classical feng shui where there are good directions and bad directions or do i go with the western version where everything is good i went with that and, and and the reality is the good direction bad direction thing it's is it you know like like i'm right-handed i totally can write 
you know, I, I write so much faster, easier, more legible with my right hand. I can write with my left hand. It just takes me longer and it's not quite as pretty. Um, that's what, so your, your dragon friend who's asking this question, you, the, you, they may find that they are having to use parts of their personality, their skill set, uh, or their brain in ways that they're not comfortable with. And it's going to feel awkward. But in, in reality, those are often the years where the most progress is made because you have to slow down long enough to accomplish the task. And so that's, again, the precision, the patience, the attention to details. Which sounds like a good spot to wrap this up. So, <laughs> do you have um, parting words about the year or do you feel complete with what you've said? I feel pretty complete with what I've said. Then how can people find you? So you can find me on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Um, you can, it's all under theintuitiveinterior.com. Uh, the, you can also find me on my personal page if you really feel like, because I do a lot of, of uh, interesting things there too. Occasionally I will share about current events and how it is showing up, how they're showing up with the uh, astrology of the day. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's probably the best way to find me. Um, would love to answer anybody's questions. Feel free to, to you know, I'll keep looking at on, under here, under uh, the Empowerment Unlimited page, and we'll answer questions there. Um, I'll put this up on, on YouTube as well. And, and uh, so Did I say I, YouTube too? Yeah, I'm on YouTube as well. Uh, it's a professional Aquarian on YouTube. It's, oh, not, okay. complete, it's not consistent branding. Yeah, it's what I do. Um, it's hard. Yeah, I, I finally, I did all, I finally was able to get everything consistent under the intuitive interior. So except Twitter, but I don't use Twitter. Twitter, Twitter makes me crazy. We, can we need less crazy in the world. Too. It, well, very much so very much so yeah so my website's empowermentunlimited.net and my facebook page is empowerment unlimited and the uh, youtube channel is the professional aquarian so uh beverly this was great we should come up with other reasons to talk yes we should it would be fun it would be fun i'd like that all right so thanks everybody thank you happy thanks new for the year. great questions appreciate them happy new year happy new year <laughs>